Hello, bonjour, comment ça va Today we're talking about Doctor Who and the Age of Time on the Oculus Quest. Let's go Welcome back to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of VR. That's right, my name is Lazius K. Now, let's talk about Doctor Who and the Edge of Time on the Oculus Quest. So Doctor Who, the Edge of Time, you get to go on adventures, visit alien locations, pilot the TARDIS, and solve puzzles within the reality virus. So when you start off the menu for the very first time, you're gonna see a different set of options. You can start a new game or you can try up to a few chapters. So when it auto saves from one chapter to the next, you can then choose the one you want to play. Very good for replayability or if you just want your friends to knock around. And then also you also have the settings. So in the settings, you can change the snap time, the snap rotation, the blinkers, which help you against motion sickness. I usually leave it on medium. The walk speed, which is also something that can help you for those with motion sickness. I generally leave it on standard. You can put it to fast, but fast might give you some motion sickness. And play position, whether you're in standing or you're sitting. And also the subtitles. You'll find that for the subtitles part, it'll be very useful to turn them on at times because it, during the game, the music can be quite high in terms of volume. And then the narrator's voice, you can't really hear it. So you'll definitely want to turn the subtitles on. So you'll see the moment that you start the gameplay in chapter one, the story begins to unravel. You'll be placed in a laundry mat where the reality virus will be introduced to you and you're gonna have to solve puzzles straight away in order to progress. So there are definitely some graphical issues uh, during the gameplay, which you'll notice from the get go, but they do get better as you progress through the different chapters. For example, they ask you to look at photographs to try and find clues for certain things. And you'll notice that the photographs are very glitchy. The graphics actually, especially when you get close to something, you'll notice that the graphics will start to move quite a lot. If you get too close to a counter or a wall, then the wall's gonna move away from you. So you're not gonna actually go inside the wall itself. Then the other thing is that all the edges to things that, especially straight lines, are very jagged. I'm sure that the developers are already aware of those kind of things, especially when it comes to the anti-aliasing, and hopefully, of course, they will patch a new update in the new future, or put something in the settings where we can actually increase the graphic power. One of the things I've really enjoyed in this VR experience, despite the graphical issues, is the sound and the music, which is composed by Richard Wilkinson. It really makes you feel very immersed. Even though you're walking around in an environment where, which is very much in low poly, this music and the sound really makes you feel immersed in the environment, really intense when you're solving certain puzzles, and especially when you have certain uh, monsters that come to you, wow, you suddenly get very frightened and, and, and you, you forget where you really are. And, if you are someone who's a bit, you know, sensitive to creepy crawly things or environments that are somewhat a little bit scary here and there, you would definitely feel it. It would definitely give you some, your hairs to stand up uh, for sure. So some of the things that can be quite frustrating from the get go is you're provided with a sonic screwdriver, which is a special tool used to open doors or switch things on or do various different other things. Do be patient if they tell you to open a door or switch a light on or something using the sonic screwdriver and it's not working, just be patient, position your body in a different position and go closer or further away from it. Now, Doctor Who, the edge of time, there's definitely between four to six hours of gameplay, depending on your age and you also the ability of solving the puzzles. I mean, there were some, most of the puzzles are actually no bad. Uh, one of my favorite ones was where you had to place different lasers, I had to bounce off different beams, and also when I was transported into another world where you had the present and then you could transport yourself into the past. Now that was beautifully done. An option that might be nice inside of the settings is to switch off the narrator's voice, only because I find that sometimes the narrator gives you too many clues, or the clue that they give you is a bit too obvious as to how to solve the puzzle. Now, I think that's great if maybe you're someone who's a bit younger and who maybe, you know, needs more help to some assistance to solve a puzzle. But if you're maybe older and you just want to 
really be able to solve a puzzle on your own without any assistance whatsoever. You don't have that choice. So it can make the gameplay finish the game a bit too fast. So I think it would be great if in a future update, the developers could add in the settings to switch off the narrator's voice. There are several different options in terms of how you can explore the world. You can also teleport, but there are some glitches on the teleporting. I noticed, for example, if you teleport once and then you want to teleport a second time straight away, you actually have to wait maybe a second each time because the second time that you press on the teleport button, it's not going to work. You'll notice that during chapter one, there's going to be some sort of introduction that is made by the BBC, like an animation. And this will happen after you've completed a few tasks. Now, I have to stress that this can actually cause a lot of motion sickness because you'll be going through a wormhole where you're traveling through time and everything's moving around really fast and there's a lot of flashing going on and also text coming in and out of the frame. So be very cautious. I really suggest that you either close your eyes or you just look straight in one direction without moving your head at all. I think this is something that the BBC could have chosen to just cut out completely. It will be really great in the future updates when developers add more chapters, as undoubtedly they probably will do. It's also enable a way when you're saving something to start from the point, the last point where you clicked save. Because I have noticed that during the gameplay when I click save and I switch off my Oculus Quest and I go back into the chapter, I have to actually redo like maybe 20 minutes or 15 minutes worth of gameplay to get back to the same point. And that can be a little bit frustrating for me. It doesn't maybe always want me to you know, go back knowing that I have to redo everything. It can be a little bit annoying. So I hope that in a few future update that comes soon, the developers can fix that part and just enable me to start where I clicked save from or where I exited the game from. That would be really, really awesome to have a save option like that. To me, this kind of VR experience is more geared towards people who perhaps aren't so experienced or who haven't purchased tons of other apps yet because it does provide a really good VR experience. I mean, the music and the sound, to me, is really what brings everything together. Some of the puzzles, of course, are great and the storyline is not too bad. So all in all, it's not a bad VR experience, but I think in terms of graphics, if you compare it to Time Store or I Expect You to Die or Fuji or, you know, other experiences like that, for example, Shadow Point, the graphics are definitely much better in those VR experiences and the game, the length of the gameplay is comparable to the Age of Time Doctor Who on the Quest. So I'm not quite sure why the BBC decided to create a VR experience where the graphics have really been compromised compared to all those other VR experiences. Is it because the music was more intense and took more memory? Uh, I'm not quite sure. So based on all the different aspects I just spoke about, I think there are definitely a lot of areas that they can improve on and hopefully they'll bring this to us in a future update. So I hope this video was useful to you. In the next video, we're going to be talking about big screen and what's new over there and how you can order the movies and all that kind of stuff. Remember to like and subscribe, share some love so that you and I together, we can grow the community and help as many people in VR. Yeah, because that is what it's all about. All right, until next time, take it easy. As always, DJ Q Music.